Mr. President, over 104 years ago, the Ottoman Empire launched a systematic campaign to exterminate the Armenian population through killings, forced deportation, starvation, and other brutal means. Every year, I join the Armenian community in honoring the memory of the victims who made invaluable contributions to sustain the Armenian people and preserve Armenian history and culture before their cruel inhuman deaths. Mr. President, at the time of the genocide, United States diplomats who witnessed it knew that the tragedy that they were seeing was an intentional choice. Henry Morgenthau, the then United States ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, said that the Turkish government's deportation order for the Armenians was a death warrant to a whole race. Those are his words, quote, they're a death warrant to a whole race. And a name which, quote, they made no particular attempt to conceal in their discussions with him. We know what to call such an intentional, highly organized effort to destroy a people on account of their identity alone, genocide. In other circumstances, no one questions this definition. The United States foreign policy must reflect an honest accounting of human rights abuses, crimes against humanity, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. We cannot turn our backs on the Armenian victims of genocide, nor on any victims of genocide anywhere or any time it occurs. If we do, we only empower those who seek to use genocide as a weapon of war for their own malvalent purposes. The government of Turkey has funded lobbyists willing to trumpet lies and make excuses for these atrocities. The Turkish government and its sympathizers have advocated for restrictive laws on expression and against legislation that recognizes the Armenian genocide, initiated prosecutions and smear campaigns against those who study the Armenian community's experiences at the hands of the Turks, and even resorted to violence and harassment of journalists and human rights activists who bravely speak the truth. These actions are unacceptable and they speak volumes about both the crime and its cover-up. Thankfully, there are also voices speaking up against Turkey's efforts to silence the truth of the Armenian genocide. I have long worked in the United States Senate to push for this honest accounting and to ensure that anyone who represents the United States government does the same. In every session of Congress since 2006, I have introduced or co-sponsored resolutions affirming the facts of the Armenian Genocide. When I was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I was proud to to preside over the passage of an Armenian Genocide Resolution out of the committee for the first time. Mr. President, the United States Congress cannot stand idly by and let the truth of genocide be silenced. We must commit ourselves to learning the painful history of the Armenians as we seek to build a better world for our own and future generations. We must stand up unequivocally for truth, justice, and peace. Only then, with that hard work and advocacy and recognition of the truth, only then will we confidently be able to say, never again, never again. Now, I've heard many colleagues come to the floor when we talk about uh, the Holocaust and say never again. And in Rwanda, we said never again. In the Armenian genocide, we should be saying never again as well. Genocide is genocide. And we should recognize that as such so we can move forward at the end of the day. I'm proud to have worked with Senator Cruz and 23 other senators in leading a resolution recognizing the horror of this genocide. I thank them them for their efforts on this important resolution and appreciate their standing up for the truth. This is not an issue of historical dispute. I listened to President Erdogan's press conference with President Trump where he suggested, well, we're willing to, they've been reviewing this history, they're gonna review it until there isn't one more Armenian genocide victim alive. Historians from across the world, the most noted historians 
and those genocide observers and experts and ethicists have said that this was a genocide. So I want to thank my colleagues for supporting this important resolution and appreciate their standing up for the truth. I hope the full Senate will join us and send a clear message to the world that the United States stands by the truth, stands by justice, and stands with victims of genocide wherever they may be. This passed overwhelmingly with strong Republican support in the House of Representatives. We are one step away from finally recognizing this historical fact. Therefore, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate Foreign Relations Committee be discharged from further consideration of SRES 150 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. I further ask that the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, the motions to reconsider be considered upon, considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Uh, Mr. President. Senator from South Carolina. Uh, number one, there's nobody I admire more <clears throat> in the Senate on foreign policy than Senator Menendez, and he has been a champion of this cause. Uh, my objection will not to be sugarcoat history or try to rewrite it, but to deal with the present. I just met with President Erdogan and President Trump about the S-400 purchase and about the, the problems we face in Syria by the military incursion by Turkey, and uh, I do hope that Turkey and Armenia can come together and <clears throat> deal with this problem. But uh, given where we're at in Syria and some hope that maybe we can resolve things, uh, I object, not because of the past, but because of the future. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from New Jersey. Uh, needless to say, I have great admiration for the senator from South Carolina. I consider him a friend. Uh, but, you know, uh, our problem with Turkey, and I, I know my colleague has asked me several times, what are we doing about Turkey? Uh, and I know he's meant that in the context of uh, sanctions, which I obviously do support for a variety of reasons, violations of CATSA, purchase of the S-400, what they did in Syria, the list goes on and on. But in our desire to see Turkey become that which we would want it to be, which it is not under President Erdogan. We continue to become enablers of the type of actions that are undemocratic. More journalists are, are jailed in Turkey than in any other place in the world. Imagine that, a NATO ally. More lawyers are jailed in Turkey than in any other place in the world. And the simple recognition of a historical fact the simple recognition of a historical fact of then the Ottoman Empire and the cruel persecution of a people, the Armenian people, cannot be recognized by the United States Senate like the House of Representatives in an overwhelming bipartisan vote recognized? Are we so afraid to stand up to history and the truth? Are we so afraid about Turkey Who's the superpower? Who's the superpower? I'm beginning to wonder. Because every time Turkey threatens to do something, we cower. Well, for far, as far as I'm concerned, they don't get to dictate the views of the Congress of the United States. They don't get to dictate the views of this Senate. This Senate should rise up and recognize the historical truth as documented by historians, as documented by our own diplomats. And I will not cease continuing to come to the floor to prick the conscience of the Senate and to ultimately reveal who supports recognizing the genocide and who does not. Who supports recognizing the Armenian genocide and who does not. Otherwise, these words about never again they're just hollow. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.